Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem one from hacker rank hour rank 27 entitled impressing the boss. The question states, given the consecutive years sales data of a company as an array of integers a with AI denoting the total sales during the year, your current task is to present the annual sales graph. Your boss would be most impressed if the sales graph showed that the total sales never decreased for every pair of consecutive years. For this, you are allowed to modify at most one element of the array A for the property to be true. Given A, determine if it is possible to do this task. Complete the function can modify, which takes in the integer array A and returns the string yes or no, denoting whether it is possible to do the task. And note that uh, the constraints for this problem are that T, the number of test cases, is going to be between uh, 1 and 20, and the number of elements in the array is going to be between 1 and 20 as well, and the values of each element in the array are going to be between 1 and 2,000. So let's take a look at the examples that HackerRank provided us with. So here are the examples that HackerRank provided us with. The first array looks as follows when graphed, and the question's asking, by modifying at most one element in this array, can we make it sorted? And so we can see that this currently isn't sorted. If it was, we could just return yes. Uh, but the value here, the 12, is making it not sorted. So we have a couple options, but basically the problem or the example showed us that if we change it to the value 20, it will end up being a sorted array. Uh, so if we look at the second example, so the answer for that is yes. If we look at the second example, uh, you can see this is mostly decreasing, so we would have to do a ton of adjustments, and we would end up returning a no for this example. So if we go back to our original example, the way that you can sort of think about trying to solve this problem is we can either adjust uh, the value right before the one that's less than. So we need to check, you know, just looping through the array, is our current element i greater than the previous element? If not, we need to check if we can do something. And so we can either operate on the previous element or the element that's less than. If we operate on the previous one, uh, we can set it equal to the one right before it. And if we're operating on the element that's less than the previous one, we can move this one up to be equal. Uh, so if we look at a different example, though, we'll note that it's not just as simple as, you know, choosing one of those two. We actually have to check both because in this example, uh, we can see we have 10, 15, 5, 20, 25. If we were just to uh, use the first option by moving the previous element down to be equal to its previous element, this still isn't sorted. Uh, but in the alternative method, if we go back to what it was before and then we move this up to be equal to the previous element, we do have a sorted array. So basically that's our whole algorithm. We just need to check uh, if moving uh, the previous element to be equal to the previous element of that one or moving the uh, current element to be equal to the previous element up. One, if one of those two is possible, then we know we can return yes. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have our function can modify, which takes a vector of integers as a parameter and returns a string, which will either be yes or no. At the top, we're just gonna check is the size of our array A equal to one? If so, return yes, because technically that's sorted and then we don't need to worry about special cases below. Then we're gonna make a copy of our array A and call it B so that we have two different arrays to do operations on. And then we're just gonna have a for loop that starts at, uh, uh, starts at one and then loops to the end of the array. And for each element, we're gonna check is the current element less than the previous element. If that's the case, we know that we've violated our sorted condition that we're trying to achieve. And so we're gonna come down and we're gonna make a modification to both A and B. So for A, we're gonna modify the previous element uh, and we're gonna set that equal to the element before that. So setting A i minus one equal to A, my, uh, A i minus two. The only uh, condition we need to check is that i is greater than 1 because we don't want to go out of bounds. If i is uh, 1, then we know that we just want to set uh, it equal to the minimum value, which in this problem is 1. And then for b, it's a little bit more simple. We just set the current element equal to the previous element. And then once we've done this, we have both of our modified arrays a and b, and we just need to check is sorted. And so luckily there is an STL algorithm called is sorted that we can just pass in two iterators to and check. So so if either A or B is sorted, we know we can return yes. Otherwise, we return no. And the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be linear because this is a linear loop and both of the is sorted functions are linear as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. 
You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.